Hello, here's Benny from TypeScript TV and today we will talk about Node.js latest edition in version 18, which is the test runner module. The test runner module gives you the power to test your Node.js application with in-house tools from Node.js. So you won't need to install Jest or Jestmine to create unit tests for your application. You can now use Node's test module and I will show you how that works. In Node.js 18, something very cool has been introduced, which is a core test runner module. So if you've been using Jasmine or Jest, then for testing Node applications, you might not need this any longer starting from Node.js 18, because Node.js 18 now has the test runner integrated. And I will show you how to use that in this video. So let's start with a simple function, a function that just adds A to B. And we want to test this function. In order to test it, we need to write test code in a new file. And to make a code testable, we need to, of course, export it. And since we are in Node, we um, should use first CommonJS. I will also show you later how it works with ES6. So in CommonJS, you have module.exports, and then you can here define like an object. I will define an object and export our sum function. So having this set, I can now go ahead and create a new file, some test.js, where I will then like write my test code inside. And here I can do something very cool. I can use the node.js test module. So how to do that? I do const test equals require, then I require from node the test module. Yeah, and here, um, please use the node prefix because we are importing from node directly and it's standalone test module. So how does it look like? How does it work? Well, let's check to the API. So if we hover over to the test uh, page here, then we see that uh, there is specification for the test runner. In the API docs, we can then read about writing tests and subtests. So there's the describe and it block. If you've been using Jasmine, then you are probably already familiar with it and Jest also had support for the syntax. So for example, we can uh, specify that only individual tests should run and there is even support for async await. Yeah, so you uh, see that for example, like here, there, we can await some code and we can also like make use then of this. So um, for people that also like the test syntax, yeah, then um, that it will be also like working. So instead of describing it, you can just use this here. So I will copy any code over here to my test function. And then I have here the test. When doing this, I don't want anything with, uh, with uh, asynchronity. So I will just keep it like this. And then I will name the test here, for example, add numbers. So I want to test uh, adding numbers. I want to add numbers uh, one and two. So I will say that uh, const my sum equals the sum of one and two. Yeah, and um, in the usual testing, you say this is here the actual value and then const the expected value is actually what I expect from it. So the three, and then I need to have an assertion. And to make an assertion, we need an assert library um, fortunately, like if we um, check here in the code, like if we look for assertion, we see for example this here, we can copy this part over to our code. And after that, all we have to do is importing the assertion library here. I will then go here and say const assert equals we cryer and then I give it uh, also from node the assert. Yeah. So now we have um, our first test code and we can um, run it. So how do we run it? Well, that's actually not um, complicated at all. If we open the um, console, then of course, let me clear the screen. We need to verify that we have node 18 and then node 18, there is this um, test option. And with this test option, um, you can run it and it will find the files. Yeah, it's also specified in the documentation how it will find the files. So 
by doing this, yeah, I will see that um, there is here now one test and it failed. So I have to check why did it fail. Uh, what do we have here? Yeah, we have here one and two. So that uh, needs to be also changed, of course, to actual and expected. Yeah, so we saw that this here is failing. There was an insertion error. So let me just run it again. And then we see that the test pass. Yeah, so that's cool. That's uh, what we get here from that test runner. Node.js test runner has a common sense and a default setting how to locate files, but we can also define it by, for example, giving the exact path to the test file. Here I will use source and then sum.test.js to locate my testing file. This is now found. We see that there was one test and we can also give it um, a directory, in this case source, that will also work. And if I give it a directory, it doesn't exist. So for example, the directory not here, let me just change that not here. Then we will see that it can't find it because that location doesn't exist. The next thing that we will do is turning all of this into the new ES module syntax. So for ES modules, we need to first of all, change the module exports to a simple export and then in that export we are still like having the function and this one will be then imported here and we will import it from our sum file and now the important part is even though my IDE shows it here correct is that we now use the JS otherwise we'll get to confusion you will see that in a bit so and here these things also have to change. So here we need to not write it from, but import. Afterwards, we specify the location to our node testing and assertion library. Please make sure to use the node prefix when importing assert and test to not confuse the import with packages coming from the NPM registry. And next thing we'll patch is our package JSON because we have to tell Node that we are switching from common JS to ES module syntax. If we now execute our test goal, then we will see a failure. So why do we have a failure? Let me see, there is an assertion adding numbers, not okay. Ah yeah, I simply introduced the bug from before. So we need to have actual and expected, yeah? That were the values that we've seen and then we see that we have tests pass one and uh, zero failures. And again, I want to show you what happens if you remove the .js ending. Yeah, if you do this, then you will also have a failure. Yeah, so make sure when you use the module syntax that you complete the full pass here so that your module can be found. The .js extension is really important here when using ESM. Now comes my favorite part. We will turn this code into TypeScript code because it wouldn't be TypeScript TV if we wouldn't do that. So I have here a TypeScript configuration that we will take to then turn the code into valid TypeScript code. The first thing we will do is renaming our sum.js file to sum.ts. And once it has the TypeScript extension, we can turn it into proper TypeScript code. The very important thing here is to annotate our parameters. So our parameters should get types, in this case, the type of number. When we pass in numbers, we also want to have a return value of type number. This is what we will set here to make it valid. Then in the test code, we also need to update the file. So here we'll use .ts. Now the JS here, is not correct anymore because we are importing here from a sum ts file yeah so that just stays as sum what we also have to then add here to the project is in our package json we need the proper typings for node and make sure that you have typings for node 18 and we will make use of a trick we will use ts node yeah so ts node will then help us to run programs on Node using TypeScript. And I will show you how this works. So we will add here a simple script 
and that script we can name test yeah? and then in this test script we will execute node and we will execute node ts yeah, as before and in this node ts we will then like point to our testing file which is in that case here the sum dot test ts coming from the source directory as i write it now it won't work because node cannot execute typescript so we now need to apply our ts node dependency and we can tell node that it should require something from the ts node package and the ts node package can register to our program execution and then we have now something that looks quite familiar we also have to remove this module i will show you why because when you run it without let's say npm run test then we will get an error yeah it will throw us a failure here and we will see that it is an unknown file extension it cannot work with the ts because this um, module loader tries now to kick in so we need to get it out and uh, we will clear that and then run the tests and now we will see that it starts the test is run and it passes yeah so now we went through the typescript by the way the um, testing framework is experimental Usually um, when things fail, it uh, will throw also errors. So let's go here and change the expectation to four. If I do this, then we might see um, a failure. Yeah, here we have the failed. So if we scroll up, we also see here these experimental warnings, yeah, that the test runner is an experimental feature and things could change at any time. If you get buzzed by this warning, you can go to the package JSON and just tell it that here node should uh, not show you warnings so just say no warnings and if you then execute that you will still see the error yeah so you will see that uh, our tests fail but you uh, won't see the uh, the experimental message anymore yeah so that is uh, gone then okay so the assertion is wrong yeah three unequals four you will get all of the things directly now from Node.js and you might not need to install then Jest or Jasmine if you are testing pure Node applications. Keep in mind, the test runner syntax can change. That being said, try it out, but don't put your production code in the hands of an experimental test runner. Wait a little until it is mature enough and the API is stable. If you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest about TypeScript, then just follow my TypeScript TV channel here on YouTube. If you subscribe, then you will get a notification when I release new content. Currently, I'm publishing new videos every Monday.